This question of the day is so typical of the GED math test because what they'll do is they'll take fairly simple concepts, but they'll put a little twist on it. This particular concept is similar to a question of the day we did four or five days ago when we did the Pythagorean theorem, and yet this one's a little more complex. It's got a little trick to it. So let me show you how uh, what that is. First of all, notice I've been asked to find the length of a missing side. Um, they call that missing side over here x. So this is my missing side, okay? And the missing side is on a right triangle, a triangle that has a perfect uh, right 90 degree corner here. Okay, a lot of us know that there is a formula that relates the three sides of a right triangle. So anytime you're given two sides and you want to find a third one, go bust out that formula, that relationship. It's known as the Pythagorean theorem. And it is on your GED formula sheet. So just go ahead and look at your formula sheet. You'll see it almost at the bottom of the page. And the theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Super important to understand that the a's and b's in this formula are the legs of your right triangle. They're the two sides that make this kind of L around the right angle. That's your A and B, and you might say, well, which one's which? And I say, it doesn't matter, okay? All that matters is that your legs are A and B. Then the side across from the right angle, that's known as the hypotenuse, that has to be the C. This formula will not work if you don't get C in the right place, so super important. Okay, so whenever you go to plug in a formula, the very first thing we're going to do after we write down the formula itself is put in the information that we know. So first of all, we know we can call that 16A. Again, you could have called it A or B. It won't make a difference. But I'm looking for the other leg, so I'm going to leave B as B. It's a mystery to me, the thing I'm looking for. And I'm going to make sure that 20 gets plugged in as a C. Students who get this wrong usually get this wrong because they plug, put in the 20 for the B instead of the C. Now, as always in an algebra class, do the math that you know how to do first. Simplify before you start solving. So the first thing I'm going to do is simplify 16 squared. I know how to do that math. I don't care if you do it in your head or in your calculator, but if you put type that in, you would get 16 squared would give you 256. Now, I don't know what b squared is, so I'm just going to write plus b squared. That's my mystery right now. I keep my equal sign steady, and there's more math I know how to do. 20 squared is 400. 20 times 20. Now, I have this expression. Now, you're going to notice that on the left side, there's no more math I know how to do. I can't do this addition because I don't know what 256 plus b is. And I can't do this squaring. Again, how can I square a number that I don't know what it is? So as soon as you're out of work that you know how to do, it's time to start solving. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to um, start taking away any numbers that are with B. Let's take away 256 first. 256 is currently adding with B, and so to take him away, I will subtract 256. Now, as a lot of you guys know, the rule of algebra is you can do whatever you want. You can take them away if you want to, as long as you do it to both sides. So let's see, after making that change, what's going to happen to my equation? Well, on this left-hand side, 256 minus 256, that just zeroes out. And all I'm left with is this positive b squared, or just b squared. I'm running out of room over here, so I hope you guys don't mind if I come and pop it up here. So I have a b squared left on the left-hand side, and that's all that's over there. Then I have my equal sign. And on the right-hand side, there is the math to do. 400 minus 256, and if you did that, again, I don't care where you do that. In, on paper, in your calculator, call your girlfriend, whatever. But I would get 144. Now, too many students stop here. They're like, I'm done, y'all. You are not done in algebra until your letter is alone. It, this is not solved until my letter is alone. And so I am going to need to still get rid of this square. We always get rid of something in algebra by doing the opposite. So you have to think to yourself, what is the opposite of square? Well, we know the opposite of add is subtract. 
the opposite of multiply is divide, but a lot of students don't realize that the opposite of square is square root. So if I want to get rid of a square, I'm going to square root it. Again, the rule of algebra is you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides. So I'm going to take the square to the other side. On this left-hand side, square and square root will cancel, leaving me with just b. And on this right-hand side, there's the math to do. The square root of 144 is 12. And so I find out that this x, this missing unit, is 12. But 12 what? All these other units were in feet. This will also be 12 feet.